Yes, so uh, to introduce the topic again, uh, sorry, but, um, so Schneider and Co is a startup specialized in horizontal drilling machines. Uh, technology is developed for okay, gas, electricity, telecommunication mainly, and, and to allow cables or pipes to be installed under the ground. Um, they have an innovative uh, solution uh, with uh, six patents. The first was filed in, in 2000. Uh, they say they don't have any competitors so far, so uh, they have a quite exclusive solution. Uh, but their revenues was below their expectation, uh, mainly due to uh, the distribution network. Um, their investor uh, decided to exit the, the deal in, in 2008. So Schneider identified a company interested in their technology, which is called BOMA AG. And this company started a due diligence exercise uh, based on this portfolio, the, the six patents related to horizontal drill, drilling machines. And the aim of this study uh, is to, to evaluate this uh, for BOMA, the, the portfolio, um, and to let them determine the, the price of, <laughs> of this deal. Um, BOMA has requested certain information from Schneider to be able to start this task. Um, uh, relevant cost of capital, product life cycle, company tax rate, closing date, and the first production. Uh, the valuation started in January 1st, 2009. And another important element from this introduction is the, that BOMA AG's distribution network and their reputation uh, are to be considered as strong uh, complementary assets uh, to, to take into account yes, in this valuation process. And, uh, Go next. Uh, yes, um, as was discussed, uh, we have taken the income approach evaluation method, which basically uh, evaluates or values uh, the present value of future earnings. That's one method. Or else we try to uh, assess the costs that we will be have avoided as a result versus uh, since we are owning the asset. And this is basically the relief uh, method, uh, which we are going to use. Uh, so basically, um, we are, have the four main elements, which makes up the formula, which will be calculating the amount of uh, money as uh, we have saved from, from not licensing up. So the first basic of the formula is the turnover, which basically we are going to use the cash flow um, inflows that we have from the HDM um, product itself and also from the spare parts, which we'll be selling um, over the next years, which will be considering it. And all this uh, cash flow will be discounted for, for the actual year we are doing the evaluation. Then will be an important aspect is uh, we'll be measuring the royalty rate, um, which basically um, estimates um, all in terms of, of the royalty rate we'll be saving uh, from, from our end. The also an important factor is the asset specific risks, which will be evaluating which risks are part of this patent portfolio, for example, are there in the granting stage? Are there still, are there, were there any opposition? That kind of risks. Once we've uh, calculated the, the, let's say the positive side, the income side, then we have to reduce the costs, which will be coming from in terms of maintenance for keeping this type of uh, patent portfolio and also the cost of uh, the corporate tax we pay on, on, on this patent. Um, all this then will have to be uh, divided by, by the time factor. So we have, we have to take into consideration the length, the estimation uh, of, of, of life of, of at which we are calculating this, this valuation and also um, the WEC, the weighted average cost of capital, which is basically um, calculating the discounting factor of, of all this capital we have invested in, in this, in this um, uh, situation. Okay, so we go to the assessment of the uh, useful life. So there are uh, some factors to consider. 
first, uh, we have to take into consideration the maximum uh, useful life of a patent, uh, which is usually determined by the duration of maintenance of a patent. So usually the average can be eight years or it could be more. Then uh, another aspect that we have to consider is in evaluating the useful life is the duration of usage. This is usually shorter than the maintenance period. Uh, some patentees are not able to use or work the patent upon its application. So this information has to be determined from the patent owner. And if uh, duration of usage information is not certain or clear, uh, product life cycles can be used instead in the evaluation. So this product life cycle uh, refers to the length of time that a product is introduced to consumers into the market. So if this uh, product life cycle cannot be determined for certain and not appropriate, uh, depending on the product or business, then one can use the technology life cycles in the approximation. Uh, this depends on the type of technology. So Christian will uh, talk about the application of these factors into the, the case at hand. Yeah, what does it mean in our case? Uh, it has been found that maintenance and product life cycle are the relevant factors regarding maintenance. Uh, the initial patent uh, which created the whole story is uh, uh, still having 11 years of uh, validity. So this creates the maximum maintenance period for the entire patent portfolio. And regarding product life cycle, uh, we we learned that the product is uh, very uh, new. It's at the very beginning of its life cycle. It's starting to commercialize. And um, we also learned that very, uh, that competition is far away. Uh, so substitute will take quite long to reach the market. And that's why uh, a longer uh, product life cycle uh, than normal is considered. So six years or even longer would be considered. And in summary, uh, the estimate for the useful life uh, is six years. An important factor of the, um, uh, in the step for the evaluation process is to estimate the share of sales coming from the specific IP, in our case, a, a patent portfolio. So to estimate this share, I'm going to give a, an example here. If we have one equipment which is built out of two subsystems, for example, we have a, a mechanical system which is then driven by a, a, a motor and the, our patent portfolio relate to the mechanical system. We'll then need to remove the contribution from the, uh, the motor. So now on, that, that we can do, for example, by calculating the proportion of the cost of the motor divided by the total cost. So that part will remove and we will get some of the share of the of the mechanism which is covered by our patent. In our specific case here, somehow we have revenues, we have sales coming from two different streams. One stream is the uh, new product sales, so the uh, horizontal drilling machine sales, new products. And then we have one stream coming from the sales of spare part. So the evaluator in this case, he has estimated the contribution of the, of the patent on the, two, uh, on the two streams. And he estimated 75% uh, for the sales of, of new equipment and 85% for the sales of, uh, of spare part. So this will define somehow uh, these two values will take into account in the so-called preference parameters we, which was in the valuation formula that even presented. Thank you. Um, so now we have to determine a suitable royalty rate. So we will use a model um, to be able to plug into Ivan's formula. And so essentially what, what we do is we look at comparable license rates um, which have been obtained from commercial data sources. And a, a number of sources have been looked at and a number of comparable uh, technologies. Um, and these have identified a range between 2% and 6%. And 
the IP management of Bauman themselves um, have knowledge of transactions where the license rate was between four and 4.5%. 4 so in other words, this range of 2% and 6% is, is, um, is appropriate for the current uh, model um, of looking at the six patterns. So we will then look at six different criteria and give a scale, uh, assign a score for each one. And my colleague will now look at that. Um, so for, uh, for each criteria, we, we define um, the score. For, for example, for the, the scalability, uh, we are in presence of the a pro a product uh, which is uh, fully implemented. It's already working, so it's the maximum score of 1.2. For the technology uh, life cycle, uh, we see that we are at the beginning, uh, early beginning of the technology, so that the score would be 1.1. Uh, there are no substitutes uh, on the market yet, so the maximum score of 1.2 would be chosen. Uh, for the technological coherence, we see that uh, we maybe lack a little bit of uh, protecting any uh, variation of the main, the main system. We have uh, only functional units uh, protected, so the score would be 1.1. Uh, however, the technology is really key on the uh, key on the market. It's a unique selling proposition, so the score would be maximum at, uh, maximum at 1.2, and the competition uh, would be scored at 1.1. .1. Uh, so altogether, when we sum uh, all the scores uh, up, we arrive at the final uh, score of 6.9. Uh, so what we did also is that uh, taking into account that the minimum score is 1.8 for each um, factors uh, times six, it's a minimum value of 4.8, which corresponds to a rate rate of 2%. And the maximum score is uh, for one factor is 1.2 times six is 7.2. Uh, which will be attributed to the maximum royalty rate of six percent. Six, six percent. That way, we have um, uh, we have a correlation uh, with a, a final note, a final factor note of uh, six point nine. We arrive at a royalty rate estimate to be five point five percent, and that would be the, uh, used for the the main system, also the spare part, the spare parts. Uh, for the determination of aspects, asset specific risk, we consider the following aspects. The default discount shows the average risk without further knowledge on the given situation. And then based on this, we estimate the risk factor to be, to be applied here. So for the countries and status of the legal patent, patent application, uh, the risk is a bit lower due to countries of competitors that are covered by granted patents. For the risk of the ownership and contractual issues, uh, the risk is uh, highly lower uh, due to, uh, because the company owns the patent here, Siemens owns, owns his uh, patents. For the patentability and invalidity, the risk is um, a bit higher uh, because uh, there are still uh, Siemens uh, still don't uh, still have uh, pending patents sorry, uh, that can be opposed. For the freedom to operate uh, risk, uh, it's uh, lower due to non-action of competitors, uh, so the field is quite free to use. Um, then for the scope, uh, the scope, the risk is the same uh, in the field of horizontal drilling machines. For the circumvention breeze and breeze, sorry, the risk is uh, highly lower uh, due to uh, a field of uh, high precision high precision machine that is very low. Uh, and then for detectability of each infringement and enforceability, uh, the risk is lower re regarding the field and competitor. The risk discount is computed by multiplying the values assessed for the particular legal risk aspect. So here, when we multiply it all, uh, we have a total uh, risk. 
uh, of 43%. Now I let uh, Jan uh, explain you the calculation of the patent value. Thank you. So I've now the honor to bring all these words into numbers. And uh, to do the valuation, we have to consider the expected revenues uh, within the lifetime of the patents. So we learned that there are two revenue streams. There is a revenue stream for the horizontal drilling machines, and there is a revenue stream for the spare parts. And we learned that the uh, lifetime, useful lifetime of the patent is six years. So we start out in year 2009 and consider the expected revenues for the following six years until 2014. Um, then we learned from Pierre that um, the relevant sales are 75% of the machine sales and 85% of the spare part sales. So we take these shares and sum that up to end up with the total relevant sales um, to be considered in the further valuation. Now we learn from Audrey that the asset specific risks sum up to a risk factor of 43%. So we take these 43% share of these uh, total relevant sales and end up with the risk adjusted relevant sales. And the applicable or suitable royalty rate is 5.5%. 5, 5 so we take these 5.5% of the risk adjusted relevant sales to end up with the total license fee. That's one cost factor that we have, and that, that's the total license fee. And then we have to remove the costs. One cost factor is the portfolio specific costs, maintenance, prosecution, annuities, and uh, these, these costs are uh, taken, uh, removed directly, and then another cost factor would be the tax, and that would be, that's also removed, and so we end up with the total license fee after tax, and then we have to consider the discounting, since this is a future cash flow, we have to discount that, and discount this with the VAC factor of 12%, and get the present value of the future revenue stream for each specific year. And if we sum that up, we get an overall value. And then there is another tax specific issue that we have to consider. This is due to the fact that a royalty payment would actually reduce the income that's a taxable and, and also with the income, it would also reduce the tax liability. And we have to consider for this one as well. And this, therefore we have to introduce another factor of 1.25 that we multiply with this 2.2 million and end up with the total portfolio value of 2.75 million. <laughs> 